I've picked the wobbliest table, but let's give this a go. This is a box, but inside here we have the new Core Ultra Series 2, if my camera's gonna switch focus there. That is it. This is the new system on a chip that will be powering next-gen laptops. Coming out in the next few weeks, in fact, you can even pre-order some of them today. I've just had a quick hands-on with ones from Samsung, uh, Asus, Acer, MSI, LG, Dell, and they all come with these either new Core Ultra 7 or Ultra 9 processors. Now, I've actually just come out of a presentation from Intel. I'm here in Berlin at IFA. Uh, Intel flew me out here, nothing sponsored, but they brought me out here, and this was a technical briefing, so I'm not gonna bore you to death with all the slides, but I'm gonna give you the highlights and tell you why maybe you would want to consider this stupid table. Why you might want to consider buying a new laptop with one of these new chips. So Intel first revealed this new Lunar Lake architecture a few months back at Computex, where I also was, uh, but now we've been able to get hands-on, literally. We have some benchmarks and just a better idea of how it performs against AMD's recently launched Ryzen AI chips, as well as the Snapdragon X Elites. Although not much was mentioned about Apple's chips with the M3 and upcoming M4. Broadly in the Q&A afterwards, they said that this will be comparable with the M3s and actually should beat it in AI performance, but nothing about M4 yet. So everything in this video is what Intel has provided me, their data, their benchmarks. I will, of course, do all my own testing when I can get a sample back in the studio. But for now, how much faster is this? Is this actually going to be a big deal? Well, let me jump right to the end of Intel's presentation and show you the overall numbers versus last gen's Meteor Lake, which only launched back in sort of December, January, so not that long ago, but we're talking 18% faster CPU, 30% faster GPU, 50% more efficient, triple the AI performance, double performance per watt. This new architecture in these premium thinner light laptops is all about efficiency. It's about giving you better performance, uh, but also using much less power, so we also get longer battery life. Because I think for most of us, Battery life, especially in these kinds of laptops, is possibly the most important thing. But the numbers I'm hearing in terms of battery life, even from Dell with the new XPS 13 with the Lunar Lake chip, 24 hours of average use or something, these are the kind of numbers that we saw from Snapdragon powered laptops, but of course, without any of the app compatibility issues. And actually, just to jump ahead a little bit, there was a bit of a, a snigger in the room when Intel were demoing as a wasp, would <laughs> go away, we're demoing some gaming benchmarks uh, because while it was faster across the board, of course, versus last gen, but also versus AMD's offering, when they brought up the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite benchmarks, it couldn't even run half the games. And obviously that is a big limitation with the ARM-based architecture we get with Snapdragon. They are still terrific chips. And actually we saw a big increase in efficiency and battery life. But at this stage, it does kind of feel like all those Snapdragon advantages, Copilot Plus, AI, better efficiency, running cooler and quieter. That's all been met or exceeded by these new chips, which is very interesting. It's been a hell of a year for laptops. So there are actually nine different SKUs of this new Intel Core Ultra Series 2. And if you're wondering what the V suffix means here, no one knows. Someone actually asked and they said it doesn't really stand for anything. So the technical name is the Intel Core Ultra 200V with the specific model numbers in there. But for consumers, what they will see when they actually go and buy the laptops is this Intel Core Ultra Series 2. Importantly though, this is meant for higher end premium expensive thin and light laptops, like your Dell XPSs and your ZenBook S14s. They are still gonna sell the current Meteor Lake chips, the Intel Core Ultra 100 series, like the 155H, 165H, but that'll be a more affordable option. And they also suggested we'll be seeing more U and H series chips. And of course, we've also got Intel's Arrow Lake architecture, which is basically a higher power, higher performance version of this coming later on, although I can't really talk about that yet. But all models of the new Core Ultra 200 series have eight cores, although with different clock speeds. There are two different Arc graphics models. We've got the 130V and the 140V. The MPU ranges between 40 and 48 tops, although importantly, they all hit the minimum requirement for Windows Copilot Plus. And we also have 16 or 32 gigs of built-in memory. And actually, this is the first time we're seeing integrated memory onto the chip outside of Apple Silicon. So you either have 16 or 32, which is great in that it reduces power use and so actually does give us better performance for the RAM. The downside is it's not upgradable. So if you want 64 gigs of RAM in your Lunar Lake 200 series thin and light laptop, you're out of luck. So without getting too nerdy and boring you all to death, let's just break this down simply. We've got the CPU, the GPU, the memory, the AI, and the other bits like the media engine 
built into this SOC, the system on chip. Now, the CPU, the processor, it has eight cores, same as the Meteor Lake, uh, but actually four fewer than the 12 core AMD Ryzen AI chips. Although surprisingly, Intel do claim that this is still the fastest processor in this category, actually beating performance from AMD while using less power and with fewer chips, which is very impressive. Of course, we'll have to do our own testing as well. But we have four P cores and four E cores, each with their own new architecture. And in terms of power draw, Intel say the full range will be between 9 and 37 watts, which is much lower than before. Intel's last gen Core Ultra 9, the 185H, was a much higher 57 watts. We're talking double the performance per watt versus Meteor Lake. So for example, in Cyberpunk here, it runs 40% faster and uses 20% less power. That's a huge improvement. Going back to battery life briefly, and the combination of having the memory on the chip, removing hyper-threading, the efficiency improvements with the architecture, these new Lunar Lake chips should beat both Snapdragon and Ryzen in battery life for most tasks. Then we have the graphics, and this guy comes with the second generation Intel Arc XE2 integrated graphics, and we're looking at a 30 to 60% boost over the previous gen. Have a look at this. They've set up an F1 2024 demo with Intel versus AMD. They did have a separate test, which included the Snapdragon chip, but right now that only supports F1 22, not the most recent two years of games. Anyway, between AMD's Ryzen AI, codenamed Strix Point, and also Intel Lunar Lake, at 10TP with high settings and with their respective upscaling, FSR and XZSS for Intel, there is a big difference in frame rates. And even without the upscaling tech, Intel say the XE2 is around 15% faster than the latest Ryzen integrated graphics. And again, going back to Snapdragon gaming, well, it's not their strong suit, let's just say. Okay, so I'm in this performance review zone, and let me just show you a couple of benchmarks. We've got some games over here. This is Share of the Tomb Raider, and we've averaged 73 FPS at 1080p, I believe with medium settings. Cyberpunk, we've got 61 FPS average. And then over here in the 3D Mark syllabi. More interesting though, is if I just go over here and squeeze past a plant, have a look at this little demo. So we've got the efficiency, the wattage used, let me drop the brightness here a little bit, of the new Core Ultra 9 288V, the slightly lower power Ultra 7 258, AMD's competitor, and the Snapdragon chip, okay? So we've got live FPSs and the wattage they're using. The Ultra 9 is getting the best performance and using either similar or less power than the rival systems. And particularly the Ultra 7, actually. And we've got a little demo here. I mean, to be fair, they are giving us real live results. This is pretty genuine stuff. You can see here we've got live frame rates, power draw, for the different chips. I think the truth is not many people are buying these thin and light laptops to play games on, although it's nice to have the option. But of course, integrated graphics are used for everything, for video editing, for 3D rendering, for, for boosting the AI performance. It's not just about gaming where a fast integrated GPU comes in. It's all combined. And actually, speaking of AI, we do now have a much faster MPU, up to 48 tops or trillion operations per second off performance, which is a bit of an arbitrary number, but we're looking at a 58% boost in AI performance over Meteor Lake. I still maintain that the MPU performance, all this AI stuff is future-proofing your laptop. And I think within a year, two, three years, pretty much every app, most applications will somehow utilize an MPU to either speed up your workflow or just improve efficiency, saving your battery life. There aren't that many use cases for a dedicated fast MPU locally right now. The vast majority of AI features are still cloud-based, but as these laptops are sold, as the hardware comes out, more devs will optimize their programs and apps to take advantage of it. So basically your laptop's gonna get better over time. So let's wrap up. Where are we now? What questions are there still to be answered? Well, number one, these are all Intel's benchmarks and numbers. We need to test it for ourselves. A, against Meteor Lake, see how much faster it is, against AMD's Ryzen, against uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon chips, but also against Apple's M3 and likely soon to come M4 chips. In terms of laptops you can actually buy, Intel say that over 20 brands uh, are working on 80 different designs utilizing this chip. So starting from today, in fact, with I believe the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro, uh, you can actually pre-order, but we're gonna see a trickle of new laptops over the next few weeks. But I did also see the MSI Claw 8, which is using one of these chips. Now, what we're seeing here is a bit of a prototype model, and actually it won't be launching until early 2025. So there is still some way before that actually launches, but I am excited for the Claw 8 and to see what that boost in efficiency and integrated graphics can do for a gaming handheld. 
But what do you reckon? Are you excited for this? And if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments below as I get trapped on the table. I'll do my best to answer. And fingers crossed, within a week or two, I'll have some full reviews for you. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here. Well, probably back at home on the Tech Chat.